Welcome to Alpha Nurse Guide. I'm your host, Alpha Nurse. This is Chapter 5, Assessment, Nursing Diagnosis, and Planning. If you want the script for this video, you can go to alphanurseguide.com. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. All right, uh, without a way, let's get started. Assessment, Data Collection. Assessment consists of gathering information about patients and their needs using a variety of methods. During the assessment phase of the nursing process, data, pieces of information on a specific topic are systematically obtained, organized into a logical database, all of the information gathered about a patient and documented. There are various approaches to data collection. One is a structured format to obtain a comprehensive database based on the 11 functional health patterns. After data in 11 areas are collected, a review is performed to see if there are patterns indicating problems. The assessment data are then compared with the patient's baselines, such as usual blood pressure, heart rate, weight, and so forth. The 11 areas, health perception, health management pattern, nutritional metabolic pattern, elimination pattern, activity exercise pattern, cognitive perceptual pattern, sleep rest pattern, self-perception self-concept pattern, role relationship pattern, sexuality reproductive pattern, coping stress tolerance pattern, and value belief pattern. Subjective and objective data. Data obtained from the patient verbally, that only the patient can describe or verify are called subjective data. A headache, tingling in the feet, or pain in the shoulder are examples of subjective data. Information obtained through the senses and hands-on physical examination is objective data. Objective data are signs that are seen, heard, measured, or felt by the person carrying out the assessment. A way that I learned to tell the difference between subjective and objective is to think about a king. A king has subject that tells him stuff. So you can make the correlation that subjective is what the patient tell you and objective is what you find out. You know, think of a king. Then we move on to the first checkpoint question. Question one, data obtained from the patient verbally that only the patient can describe or verify are called what? A. Subjective data. B. Objective data. C. Questionable data. Or D. Ineffective data. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is A. Subjective data. Because this is what the patient is telling you. Therefore, it's subjective. An example will be if the patient tell you that he has a headache. There's no way that you can verify that as the nurse. Question 2. Information obtained to the senses and hands-on physical examination is A. Subjective data B. Objective data C. Questionable data or D. Ineffective data Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B. Objective because this is information you obtain by physical mean. You can verify it. For example, Temperature of 100.5 is objective data because you can verify that by using a thermometer. Physical assessment. To conduct the assessment, use techniques of inspection, looking, auscultation, listening, usually with a stethoscope, palpation, using hands and the sense of touch, and percussion, tapping with fingertips to produce vibration and sound. An assessment should be carried out in a systematic manner. It begins with measuring height, weight, and vital signs. Record a history of what medications the patient is taking and any medication allergies. The list should include any over-the-counter medications the patient uses, including herbal preparations and prescription drugs. Take a brief medical history. Ask about special assistive devices needed such as hearing aids, glasses, a cane, a prosthesis, or dentures. 
then perform a review of systems. Usually, the assessment and data collection form contains a section for a psychosocial history and often one regarding needed assistance for self-care, gatherer nutrition and skin assessment and note the findings. A risk screening for falls may be required and a determination of educational for discharge. Then we have another set of checkpoint questions. Question three, what is auscultation? Is it A, looking, B, using hands in the sense of touch, C, listening, usually with a stethoscope, or is it D, tapping with fingertips to produce vibration and sound? Choose the best answer. The answer is C, listening. Auscultate means to listen. It's usually done with a stethoscope. Question four, what is palpation? Is it A, tapping with fingertips to produce vibration and sound? B, using hands in the sense of touch? C, looking? Or D, listening usually with a stethoscope? Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B, using hands in the sense of touch. To palpate means to touch. Then we move on to question five, the final question for this section of checkpoint question. Five, what is percussion? Is it A, tapping with fingertips to produce vibration and sound? B, looking? Or is it C, listening usually with stethoscope? Or D, using hands and the sense of touch? Choose the best answer. The correct answer is A, tapping with fingertips to produce vibration and sound. Analysis Once the information has been gathered, the database is analyzed for cues that indicate deviations from the norm. Cues are pieces of data or information that influence decisions. Nursing Diagnosis A nursing diagnosis statement typically involves three parts, indicating the patient's problem or potential problem, how the patient is responding, the causative or related factors, which can include the pathophysiology and specific defining characteristics or the signs and symptoms. Once the nursing diagnoses are identified, the planning phase occurs. Etiologic factors and defining characteristics. Etiologic factors are the causes of the problem. Signs are abnormalities that can be verified by repeat examination and are objective data. A bruise on the arm would be a sign. Symptoms are factors the patient has said are occurring that cannot be verified by examination. Symptoms are subjective data. A headache would be a symptom. Nursing diagnoses differ from medical diagnoses in that the nursing diagnosis defines the patient's response to illness, whereas the medical diagnosis labels the illness. Then we have another set of checkpoint question. Number six, what are abnormalities that can be verified by repeat examination? Is it A, signs, B, symptoms, C, headaches, or D, stomach ache? Choose the best answer. The correct answer is A, signs, because signs are abnormalities that can be verified by repeat examination. These are usually objective data. An example of a sign would be like the example I used before, a temperature of 100.5. What are factors that cannot be verified by examination? Is it A, signs, B, symptoms, C, bruise, or D, cut? Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B, because symptoms are factors that a patient has says are occurring and they cannot be verified by examination. These are subjective data, for example, a headache would be a symptoms since you can't really verify it. 
Prioritization of problems. Priorities of care are set so that the most important interventions for the high priority problems for each patient are attended to first. Physiologic needs for basic survival take precedence. One of the first rules concerning priorities of care is that the airway always comes first. Without an adequate airway, the patient will die very quickly. Circulation usually is the next priority. Failure of the heart and loss of too much blood will also quickly cause death. A nurse consults with and involves the patient in determining the priority of needs. A patient in considerable pain will usually give pain relief a higher priority than the need for food, at least on a short-term basis. After physiologic needs are met, safety problems take priority. For a patient at risk for injury, related to increased intracranial pressure, as evidenced by decreased level of consciousness, safety is the priority need. Increasing intracranial pressure can be lethal. After physiologic and safety needs have been met, the psychosocial needs of love and belonging, self-esteem, and self-actualization are given attention. Every nurse must attempt to look at each patient holistically, keeping psychosocial needs in mind while working on physical problems. Calling patients by their correct names, giving them opportunities to make some decisions about their care, protecting their privacy, and showing respect help meet psychosocial need. Planning The third step of the nursing process is planning. A goal is a broad idea of what is to be achieved through nursing intervention. Short-term goals are those that are achievable within 7 to 10 days or before discharge. Long-term goals take many weeks or months to achieve. Long-term goals often relate to rehabilitation. Then we have another set of checkpoint question. Short-term goals are achievable within a. 7 to 10 days, B. 14 to 17 days, C. 21 to 24 days, or D. 28 to 31 days. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is A. 7 to 10 days. That's the range for short term goals in the medical field. Question 9 Long term goals take many blank. Are blank to achieve a days weeks b minutes hours c second minutes or d weeks or months choose the best answer the correct answer is d long-term goals take many weeks or months to achieve Expected outcome When goals are written as expected outcomes, it is easier to evaluate whether interventions have helped the patient meet them. An expected outcome should be realistic and attainable and should have a defined timeline. Some health facilities use the term discharge criteria in place of expected outcome. Desired outcome is another term often used for expected outcome. Interventions, Nursing Orders The nurse selects appropriate nursing interventions to alleviate the problems and assist the patient in achieving the expected outcomes. Consider all possible interventions for relief of the problems and then select those most likely to be effective. Write them on the nursing care plan as nursing orders. Once every 24 hours, the care plan is reviewed and updated. Necessary changes can be made to it at any time. Then we have our last checkpoint question. How often are care plans reviewed and updated? A. Once a month. B. Once a week. C. Every 24 hours. Or D. Once a year. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is C every 24 hours and 
you don't have to wait 24 hours to review your care plan. I mean, if something changes in the condition of patient, you can update the care plan, you know, right then and there. But normally it's every 24 hours that the care plan is updated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for this video. Like I said, if you want the script for this video, you can go to alphanerseguide.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. That's all I ask for this video. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen.